I've been practicing. You'll have have to have watched oh, yesterday's show too. Well, let's see it again. Let me see it. <laughs> why, can, why can't I do that? I don't know why you can't do that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, dependent upon which English newspaper you read this morning, yes. good, good and bad news. Uh, if you read the Daily Mail, then you need to socially distance at one metre, mm -hmm. which means that uh, Oliver Dowden, the Culture Secretary, uh, can, can, can offer further advice about social distancing on football pitches, yeah. uh, different to that which he initially did. Um, or if you read The Guardian, then it's still two metres. Listen, as I said yesterday, Oliver, talk about something you do know, not about something you don't know. Uh, that could, that's a dangerous invitation. Is it? Yeah, there might not be much on that list of okay. what he does now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chelsea are calling to be allowed to have nine substitutes on the bench, from which they can choose five during the course of a game. I'm wondering where they're going to sit them, not whether or not it's a good idea. Yeah, but it's not a good idea, anyway. Why? I don't think it is nine. Why do you want nine? Because you've got more choice. Oops. Yeah, well, exactly. So, therefore, the better clubs are going to want nine because they've got the better players and they've got the better groups of players. Mm -hmm. The clubs that aren't as well off as them don't have nine Well, that's a, good the way substitutes. it's always been, hasn't no, it? No, no, but when you've only got five, the team like Bournemouth or even Aston Villa or Watford, who are down in the bottom, can have five pretty good substitutes. I doubt very much if they could have nine, but Man City could, Man United could, Liverpool could. Chelsea could. So what's your argument? We, we've argument. always weighted everything in favour no, of the No, no, that's, that's weighed it too much. Listen, I'm, if they want five changes right now in a game, I'm OK with that. If they're saying it, it protects the players, I'm OK with that for now. I don't want five next year. I, no, want, no. I want three subs next year. Well, there is a debate, year. Andy. It continues. Right. Championship anger over a, a start on the 20th of June. Um, that really has upset one or two, including Les Ferdinand, who's now saying he's the uh, director of football at Queen's Park Rangers. He's saying there's more more danger to players as a result of the three weeks they've got between now and then than there would be from COVID-19. They've been very vocal though, haven't they, Kupia, as a whole, as a club? Yeah, I think he's got a point, Andy, I have to say. But if you, if you listen to Charlton and Lee Boyer, they're desperate to get started. Well, if you, you talk to Sean Dyche and Burnley, he'd start tomorrow. But if you talk to <laughs> well, Pep Guardiola and Manchester City, so he we, needs time. We have to take it in the round. Yeah, um, um, uh, from, from the newspaper that we don't mention, uh, cash-strapped clubs set to beg stars to take huge pay cuts next Good luck season. With that. Well, it, it could be that they don't have to persuade them, Andy. A lot of them are going to the wall, I well, read, between now and the start of next well, season. Well, Premier League clubs. And yes, not just, not just mm -hmm. clubs outside of the Premier League. Mm -hmm. um, Pochettino, uh, in conversation with a Spanish um, um, blog, I have lifted trophies. I, I know what he's saying, that what he's done in his career amounts to the same. No, no, no. But no, the truth no. is... Sorry, sorry, um, Richard. Richard. You, you haven't lifted a trophy. Richard, if I look in Wikipedia right now, or other social media outlets, and I search for Maurizio Pochettino, and I have his league career in front of me, and I, and I put managerial honours, what will come up? Uh, well, it, he's also claiming that they were the... When he was at Espanyol as a player, they were first to play out from keeper... From, from back to front. I, I, I've been watching a whole host of games from the 1980s recently and I've seen Ray Clements doing that, catching a cross and fizzing it to Phil Neal and Liverpool listen, playing from the back. I saw All those listen, years ago I in 1980, but I, I could be I confused. saw a game the other week there and I was watching it and Gordon might have been playing in it. You've now just introduced our guest. No, they don't know which Gordon. It could be Gordon anybody. It could be Gordon, Gordon, Gordon Ramsay. It could be Gordon, could be Gordon Ramsay. Ramsay. We'll introduce it you. It could be any Gordon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I watched the team play. Liverpool were playing at Old Trafford and they were getting beaten 2 1. Yep. And I'm watching it, and the equalising goal came an open play with Phil Thompson, the centre back, sliding it across the six yard box. Goalkeeper blocked it, and who tapped it in? Phil Neal. No, Alan Hansen. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, a lovely piece in the mirror today a wizard whose magic changed everything, um, uh, Silver at Manchester City. Oh, yes. Which led me to think about all the big influential players at Manchester City over the last 10 years. Who signed them? Manchini? Yeah, all of them. All of them? All of them, bar none. Company, you never signed De Bruyne. Company was signed by Mark Hughes. You never signed De Bruyne. Uh, De, De, De Bruyne. I'm saying across the last 10 years. Okay. Aguero he signed, did he? Aguero. David Silva. Yeah. Big Yaya. -ya. Company. Yeah, yeah. All of them. Yeah, ain't bad. Uh, the new place for football, uh, Premier League stars to change in porter cabins, according to the Mirror today. Well, all I would say is it didn't do Blackburn any harm the year they won the title. <laughs> That's right. Of course it did. Do you agree? I remember. And a couple here which actually really interested me, Andy. Um, Real Madrid have decided not to use the Bernabeu for their return to La Liga. They're going to use their training ground. But I think their training ground is a little different to most because they've got a small stadium, stadium there, haven't yeah. they? I, I, I believe. OK. But I, I'm not quite sure that should be a unilateral decision. Well, it shouldn't be, no. And from Absolutely Italy, not. Italian football authorities are considering allowing fans 
into stadiums next month. And let's not forget wow. how bad COVID was in Italy. Um, they've issued a 40-page document outlining strict new rules for the resumption of Serie A, naturally, yeah. on, on the 20th of June. Um, but they are they are considering Richard, letting in. But I don't see. I don't. There's a lot of things I get about starting the game. A lot of things I, I don't get. That we have what nine ten games, basically. Ish. Why are we rushing supporters back? Just well, leave it. And forget the, it. I take you back to the point I made five six days ago, right at the start of this series. And by the way, today's an anniversary for us. This is number fifty. Is it? Why are we rushing football back? Why no, not take no, our time no, no, I, I, and start I, I, in the I, middle I, of August? We're not rushing it back. I don't think we've rushed it back. I don't think we need football now. All well, kinds I, I think of we different do. issues that we have. We I have think created for ourselves. Um, I, I just don't get it. Anyway, uh, Manchester United apparently sniffing around Raheem Sterling. Wow. Mm. If the move that he's thinking about to Spain doesn't come off, Manchester, Manchester United. United are very interested so in they, offering an alternative. What was the last time that happened? Probably. Uh, Tevez. That? Tevez, yeah, that would have been Tevez. The other way. Yeah. Welcome to Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our programme. The aforementioned Gordon is not yes. Gordon Ramsay. No. Nope. Is not Gordon McQueen. No. Nope. I am delighted to say it is the former Scotland manager, Gordon <laughs> Strachan. Uh, I nearly <laughs> gave you a wee wee man. Sorry about that. <laughs> Never played against Bill Johnson at Manchester United, so I couldn't have been playing in that. Um, so it's amazing when you're, you're talking about playing for the back. Yeah, but just different circumstances a couple of years ago because if you played from the back, you could roll it back, put it back to the goalkeeper and he could pick it yeah. up. So you could play from the back. But you, there was a get-out at that point. You know, The ones who won this club have just rolled it back to the goalkeeper. So uh, there was playing from the back because I watched a, a Scotland versus West Germany game the other week there. And there was there was a lot of football. It was very rarely a ball played in the air, front to back, you know. Seriously, if you ever want to watch a game, and if, if you said to me the game was played like that, I would have went, no. Yeah. And I actually was playing number 10. My, te <laughs> my kids, we number 10? I went, I don't think so. <laughs> they said, well, we well, played number 10 here. Couldn't remember a thing. But the actual ball on the ground was phenomenal. Seriously. What, what year was that? I think Sorry? What year was that? 1986. Oh, there you go. So do you think the game has actually changed at all, Gordon, or have we just changed the language we use around it? I think what, what happened then in the 90s, the game went from definitely going longer. Uh, I remember it, Sheffield United versus Leeds United, where there's Dave Bassett and Howard Wilkinson. And it got that, <laughs> that tight. Two, two linesmen were flagging for offside at the same time. <laughs> and the referee just went, ah, just play on, forget it. So uh, the, then the game has, has evolved more. It's evolved line. more because of it, certain things have made it far better. Yeah. Uh, you, you wouldn't have had Barcelona if you didn't have the tackling from behind uh, outlawed. Yeah. The pitches are far better. Mm. So, uh, goalkeeper. They go and pick up. So all these things are like the perfect storm that turned into Barcelona and Manchester City. Um, unfortunately, we've got a lot of clubs trying to play like them. I'm watching the German teams just now in the Bundesliga. It's absolutely hilarious with some of these Bundesliga teams thinking they can play like Barcelona and Real Madrid. It's fantastic. But why, they can't why play do they, anything why, like it. Why do they believe that to be the case then, Gordon, or that that is the correct way to play football, shall we say? Well, the, correct, the correct way to play football, anyone will know, we want excitement, we want headers, we want shots, we want crosses, we want tackles. That's the best way to play football. Uh, that stuff where it takes about an hour to get from one end of the pitch to another. It's, kind of, it's propaganda at times. It's like yeah. football snobbery. Look what I'm doing. Yeah, but it's yes. not very good. Why are you doing it? Um, a, a, a good manager can play with common sense, play at a certain point when it's re ready. As I said, there's only... A certain amount of teams that can do it in the world, and and if you look at Barcelona and Man City, the reason why they can do it better than anybody else because every player in their team can beat somebody. Yeah. No matter where you are, they can always get into trouble. Look at Andy Robertson at, at Liverpool. You get close to Andy, he will beat you. It's certain most teams play who when they get stuck, they have to launch the ball somewhere or go back to the goal and it's launched anyway. So they pass it for five times, goes to the goalkeeper, he launches it. Um, That's true. So there's to, to to be able to play that football, you have to have every person in the the team who's comfortable with the ball, but also the fact that they can beat you with the ball. That's for sure. Gone. Is it also true the fact that this sport 
that's been the most popular sport in the world for as long as it's probably been invented. The reason it is that is there is no right way or wrong way to play football. There are different ways to play football and it's the different ways that we see the game played that make it so attractive. Absolutely. You're right. And now there are actually so many variations. But when you look at it, it's, 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 you can go through so many attacking setups that you see you guys put yeah. up. But it's basically the same. And I've got an analysis, but it's basically the same. There's <laughs> one person wide on either side. Now, there's people playing the old inside right, inside left positions. Remember when we played yeah. years ago and a main striker. So that's the way that they kind of play. When you defend, everybody kind of goes 4 5 1. But going forward, there's people are now moving about in areas, playing between the lines. I think there's far more to the game now, and it's 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 far harder to coach now. Well, it's it's more pleasurable because when I started and you were playing, it was like four four two. Yeah. And that was that everybody got who your man was and you knew how to pick him up. But now it's more I, I think the game is uh, at times is far better to watch. And I might be a this is a gem in the game, I've watched a couple of games today because we're doing other things now. And I think there was guys there with some ability as well, you know. Real ability. Maybe they want the the machines or physically <laughs> as good as they are just now. <laughs> what are you trying that, to say, we man? <laughs> but, but I'll tell you what, but the reason being the reason being is that the physically better yeah and and uh, and uh, you can, yeah, the, your lung capacity is better, then you can use your ability longer. That's what I'm saying. You look at some of the guys from the 80s, after about 80 minutes, the socks were rolled down, swelling, um, and just sheer heart got them through. The players nowadays, I looked at a cup final we played in, in uh, 85. Five. Mm -hmm. The character of every person that pitch was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Physically, they'd probably be better just now, but they got through with, with heart as such. But again, even the goal that was scored on that day, I doubt very much if you'll get anything as good as that. Now, the, the Norman White side goal. So there was. I thought Keeper like should have saved that, wee man. I really think. Well, what happened? The fullback should have shown Norman on the outside. That's the first mistake. Yes. And Big well, Neville should have. Big Neville should have gobbled it up. I'm sorry, wee man. He, couldn't, he, he really couldn't have shown Norman on the outside because of the fantastic <laughs> player running to the outside there. I with know. A through pass. <laughs> um, and, and that, Guess who? And that unselfish run of 40 yards, and extra <laughs> time, the phenomenal little guy, allowed Norman that two yards to score a goal. He looked uh, like you, Gordon. A, he looked like you, but he, 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 he. It was me. It was me, by the way. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, he it had ginger me. hair, not strawberry blonde. I, I, I mean, that's the only difference, I think. He had ginger here the time. fantastic run he shouted Norman give it to me give it to me and he turned inside I went oh you're big oh great goal <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I went oh no <laughs> Gordon to talking then about styles modern day the two teams that I think have been best over the last five six years City and Liverpool which of the two do you prefer to watch if you want to be excited I, I, it, 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 I, I, I drool over different things I, I, with teams, I, I, I watch the way that Liverpool closed in together and, and again, you need to have maximum fitness to do what they do it's, sometimes it's easy to close down but when you mm. actually get it back have you still got enough, enough energy to go ba bang transition and quickly and still beat players and do things I think they're wonderful to watch but I thought Dortmund were wonderful to watch in Klopp so I, I love that I love their interchanging then I watch Man City then I, I just drool over because in the centre midfield of Liverpool, they're really efficient. efficient. Fitness can see some passes. Yeah. But mm. the, the, Silva and De Bruyne, Tati, it's like, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like art what they do, yeah. De Bruyne yeah. and, and Silva. And I, I keep telling our kids at Dundee, I look at them, they only pass the ball when they're ready. Mm. And if they're not ready, they beat you or they take it away from you, then they pass the ball. These guys only give you the ball when they're 95 points got to go to you. Most players, 50-50, or give it a shot, and the coach shouts, oh, unlucky. It's not unlucky. Watch the good players. Anyway, so there's the, the two sides are magnificent to watch. But they end up in the same attacking positions, but with different players. Yeah. It's amazing. So... They all go like they end up like an old-fashioned five up front years ago with two wide men 
two and three forwards and a striker who can come back and forward. Man City do it with wide men, whether it be Sane, um, Bernard or Mares out there, right? And then you have De Bruyne and Silva going inside, right, inside left. There's Liverpool do it by goal. You be the wide men. And there will be men going playing inside, right, with Firmino, Sally and Salah. And they interchange. So it's a, it ends up the same attacking one. Right? But with, it's fascinating to watch. It's the same system of attacking, but with different players. I was just going to say, the thing for me, Gordon, would be, I'm guessing, and we've talked about this, Richard, now, about, about the difference between Liverpool and, and Man City. I'm guessing if you were at, at your pomp as a player, you would want to play in City side, right? I think you'd want to play yep. there with your style. Whereas I as a centre forward I was, mm. would much rather play in Liverpool side, the way they go about it, the way that Alexander-Arnold and Robertson deliver as many crosses into the box. They're not scared to put it in there. They play forward, I think, more quickly than and get the front men involved more often than, say, City do. So I'm guessing you would rather play in City side, but I would rather play in a side that plays like Liverpool. Listen, we can con continue to dream. <laughs> me and you, that's not the so, it's very good you talk about that. It's well, a, why not? It's, <laughs> all right, yeah. let's, let's get real then. Let's, let's go all the so, way no, back. Where did you enjoy your, when you played, where did you enjoy your football most? Did you enjoy it noising up the old firm in Scotland, uh, entertaining with Ron's Manchester United, or getting across yeah. the line and becoming the last player to lift the old championship trophy pre-Premier League? That is, uh, I tell you, you're just talking about enjoyment, right? Yes. It's it's quite. Um, it could be anywhere. I, 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 when I played, played it was twenty five. I've got to say, I've been laughing since I was fifteen years old. <laughs> just six, brilliant. You three now, but what? And it's being very unfair to me to say where they enjoy it most. And, I, and you know, football players. We when we meet, we talk about the fun we had, the managerial things that happened in the dressing room, the silly things that happened, the stupid misses you make. You very rarely be talking about winning medals or anything like that. It's continuous yourself. So I find it very, I, I laugh so much at Dundee. I mean, stupid things happened at Dundee. I was, I was, I, 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 all I could, the only good thing about me as a professional at that point was I used to train hard. The rest, as Andy knows, because he was there at the time, we, we won the very good we lasted the game that long, I will never go. The reason being, I think, we got away from Dundee, which people think, no much a city. But when you're a kid and a teenager, it was great fun. It was, uh, So we moved it to Dundee. Life become a bit, um, you know, silly things happened to me. I got sent over when I was 15 year old in a reserve game against uh, Dundee United. I don't know if Andy was there that night. I was. I uh, think it was a ridiculous ridic decision, Gordon. <laughs> Honestly, a ridiculous. I was saying that at the time. Well, it wouldn't have been for anything other than talk, talking. Yeah, right? chipping back something. Well, yeah. surprisingly, I, was, I played 880 games. I got sent off once in, in real games. <laughs> but in the reserve game, that um, I got sent off. And Andy will remember Joe and Sandy White, the twins. Yes, yes. Left back, left winger. I played left against winger, them for about 80 minutes. And... They just kept kicking me, kicking me, kicking me. <laughs> it was a horrible night. And eventually, after about 80 minutes, I was lying face down in the mud. And I got up, and the two of them were looking at me, Joe and Sandy, identical twins. I didn't know what to do, so I kicked one and punched the other and got sent off. <laughs> so, uh, to this day, I really do not know who filmed me. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, get back. <laughs> it's very very hard to really enjoy the best the, the the place where the most pressure to be successful was Leeds when I left Manchester United uh, where it's the only time anybody said to me you're coming to this club we must do this in two years or we're financially we're in trouble because mostly when you join a club it's right here you're joining yeah. there you go and away you go this is the first time anybody had put any real so there was a satisfaction there and uh, whether I laughed as much enjoyed it as much as Manchester United Aberdeen that's debatable, and we, if I had players from each year, we'd roll a bit laughing for the next week. Um, so I, I think it's all about having fun, making friends, 
trying your best and see where you end up. But Leeds was the only place where I had there, there was there was a there was a there was a target to what a I had pressure. To, yeah. Um, Alex McLeish and Willie Miller are really good too, not just at club level, but international uh, level. Yes. McLeish yeah. didn't go missing often, but he did on one particular occasion when you needed him. <laughs> Would you care to share that story with us? Okay. Uh, usually when they tell, uh, um, uh, and after dinners, I think I'm, I'm bellish it a bit, but I'll bring it back to the kind of reality. Um, that me and Alex went to, the, I think, the World Cup in 82, and uh, for that, Dundee gave us a, a rise of 25 quid each uh, for being in the World Cup squad. So we thought, right, OK, that's 25 quid. That takes us up to about 105. Um, we think now, uh, after a certain back, uh, we think we can go and play in the English Premier League. Well, the English League. So we just debated this for a couple of, <laughs> couple of weeks. Who's got to see Sir Alex? Oh, right. No, it's no great, that. Uh, we eventually say, right, after a wee while, we'll go and see him. There's a big long corner at Pataudry and his office is on the left-hand side. So we debated this for about three three days. But I think Archie Knox, you know Archie Knox, yeah. must have found out what we were up to. And uh, But we decided we'd go and see him. We got enough courage to go and see him. So we're standing there at the door and I said to Big Alex, who's got to go first? You know what Big Alex like? He talks at the side of Smith, he's always when people up when you uh, he went, I think you should go in first. Um you played really well. You the big really well in the back. The World Cup. I knocked on the door and I went, Gaffer, can I can I and uh, can I speak to you? Aye. Sit down. <laughs> so I thought something's wrong here, right? So he didn't even ask me what I was wanting. And I said, Listen, me and I like I've been you know, I think it's time for me to move on. And then I've been here five years, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah. And he just stared at me. He's not saying anything. <laughs> anyway, I was trying to take out the swear words. What, officially, what he did was he said, listen, go forth and multiply. <laughs> right? <laughs> and take that big da-da-da who's standing well with you, because she's not going either. So, right, I'm here to go. And I've got, the, oh, there's no noises going on, screaming and shouting. <laughs> and so I went out the door. I'm looking for Big Alec down the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> so I never seen him. I never seen him for about two days because we'd had a day off after that. I said, oh, I said, where did you go? He went, oh, that got a bit nasty in there. Says, I'll, I'll, go and see, I'll go and see him next week. He's been another 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant, me man. Fantastic. The big brave centre back. Oh. <laughs> Uh, love it, Gordon. Thank you for spending time with us. It's been absolutely sensational. Uh, terrific, An education man. and a bit of fun. Thank you. See you Stay later. safe, wee man. Stay safe. <laughs> See you guys. See you later. Keep, pra <laughs> keep practising that golf, son. Keep that swing going. <laughs> Great story, isn't it? Great story. Yeah. And of course, um, Alex, Alex will require his uh, response at oh, some point. Oh, definitely. And I think we should, uh, we should, we should at least... <laughs> go, go away. You can't see him. He's still, there. He's still in our ears here. Say, I can't get off. There I can't go. get off. I don't off. need to listen to him. Now. Yeah, um, that's a, oh, yeah, that's an idea. Um, uh, uh, well, that's, we'll, that's funny. That story that reminded me when I'll tell one day about people who you think will back you up, and when you look round, they're not there anymore. Oh, by the way, yes. 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 I, I wish we had time because I wouldn't tell We that. have. You left Old Trafford. An aggressive supporter oh, well, made no, his point no, to you about leave Old Trafford. your observations of his club. You leave Old, come out Old Trafford Tunnel. You, we don't need to get that detailed no, about this it. This huge guy, he must have been six foot four, yes. comes up to well, me he wasn't massive. That big. He was about five and foot eight. He was, he was a little bit worse for drink as well. Yes. And he saw me and you walk out. I think he, goes, he saw you and he then wanted he started, to talk to he you. He started having a go at me and he's gone, You, you, yeah. I can't stand you, you hate this. He made some very good points. And I, you've been terrible in Manchester, you do that. And I'm going, Yeah, get off. Don't be stupid. Get off. Don't be so silly. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's no problem. If he starts, I've got Keezy here. So there's not a problem. At least the two of us should be able can to I handle just say, it. Can I just say, before he goes any further, he did not look six foot four in my rear view mirror as I looked back exactly. to make sure you were okay. Exactly. I have to so say. So I then turned round when he decided to leave and I went, I was about to turn around and say, well, that was lucky, Keezy. Keezy? <laughs> Keezy? Where are you? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> McLeishan <laughs> keys, what, two peas in a pod. What was That's it, what I'm what was it that uh, Winston Churchill said? What? George Orwell better than War War. I'm, 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 I'm a words man. I I'm, was I'm George a doctor Owen. of letters. I'm not looking to fight anybody. I was George Orwell and you were run running. <laughs> No. Thank you again. No. Thank you oh, again to go. Right. I can imagine how many trenches. Over you go, lads. I'm right behind you. <laughs> Thank you again for your company on Be In Sports on this channel, uh, wherever you've joined us around the world. It's been uh, a good 50th show. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, it's been terrific. 50. 50. This is our fit. We're here. A little bit of housekeeping. A week on Friday. And my goodness, we've got some good guests lined up between mm. now and then. Yeah. And then the football, of course, comes back. But um, uh, YouTube viewers, international viewers, this same place also tomorrow at this very same time. In the meantime, it's either at one metre or two. We're not sure which, but the message is the same. Stay safe, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.